What's up guys, my name is Brandon and just as expected, Apple has released the fourth beta of iOS 15.5 just one week after dropping beta 3. And in addition to this iOS release, we also got the fourth beta of iPadOS 15.5, tvOS 15.5, HomePodOS 15.5, watchOS 8.6, and macOS Monterey 12.4. But in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS and discussing what's new in the software along with what to expect in the coming weeks. All right, so let's start off with the size of this update. So you can see here it came in at 537 megabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, which of course was coming from beta 3. So a moderately sized update for a fourth beta. Let's go ahead and check out the build number, settings general about. 15.5, we can see the build number there is 19F5070B. So we do have a B at the end of the build number, which does usually indicate that we have one more beta to go before the RC, which of course comes a week before the final. So that kind of gives you a preview as to what to expect next, but we'll talk more about that at the end of this video. And if we go down, you can see the modem firmware remains unchanged at 1.61.00. All right, so now what's new here in beta four? And as you guys know, 15.5 has been a relatively boring update. It's really just a lot of changes in the code, but there are some very, very minor changes throughout the OS if you look for them. And the first one that I wanted to point out is inside of news. And there's actually a couple of them in here. So if you go to the news tab, the news plus tab right here, you will notice that the call to action up top is smaller than it was in 15.4.1. And here's what it looked like on 15.4.1 over here on the left. You can see it was much bigger. It took up much more real estate on the previous version, but now in 15.5, it's slightly smaller. Also, when we go down to an article with audio, if you tap on these three dots right there, you will see that we now have a preview audio button right there that you could press to preview the audio, whereas you did not get that on 15.4.1. And if we go into an actual article here on News Plus, you will see the call to action down below has changed as well. It just got a little bit smaller. The button is smaller and the plan auto renews has moved to the top of the button instead of being below it. So just minor changes again to the call to actions and that preview audio button. We also have a fix for the Apple Pencil. So the Apple Pencil had a lot of issues in beta three where it just would not be recognized by your iPad Pro, especially if you had the Magic Keyboard. It didn't work with or without it for me, but you know that has been fixed here with beta four. So if you have an Apple Pencil, you should see it working as expected now. There was also just recently a firmware update for the AirTags and that is version 1.0.391. And we didn't know exactly what this fixed, when it first dropped, but Apple did drop a support document to tell us what has changed. And they said this, it says it tunes the unwanted tracking sound to more easily locate an unknown air tag. So basically if somebody slipped an air tag into your backpack and you know, you got the alert on your phone and you press the button to make it have a sound, you will now be able to easily find it because it's going to be louder than it was before. So that's good news for unwanted tracking. Now we're still not seeing that new Apple account card, which is going to replace the iTunes pack this was found in the code. We even saw images of what it's going to look like, but it's still not showing up on the front end just yet. I looked in the wallet application and the iTunes application. I looked everywhere for it and I don't see anything on the front end right here, but just know that is coming soon. And that might actually end up being just a over the air update for all versions, not just 15.5. And as for those Safari changes, we don't have anything else aside from the new find on page glyph, which is right down here at the bottom. That is a new glyph for find on page. Aside from that, really nothing else happening in Safari aside from the fact that we still have our frequently visited tab right here, which disappeared in beta two, but came back in beta three. And luckily that has remained. So we don't have any other issues issues with Safari at the time of this video. And just like we've seen since beta one, there are some changes in the code, as you can see here outlined by Steve Moser, you can see just some minor changes throughout the OS, nothing too crazy going on. Now, as far as bugs go, like I mentioned, there were a lot of issues with the Apple pencil, which those have been resolved here with beta four. However, there are other issues, especially with the iPad on iPad OS 15.5 beta three. So there were a lot of issues with people just having an unresponsive screen like it would not wake up from sleep and just other issues mainly with the iPad now me personally I did not have that I only had the issue with 
the Apple Pencil, but you know, if you did have issues with that, let me know if they're resolved with beta four. I'm also rebooting my phone to see if we get that automations will run when unlocked alert. So that's a notification you get pretty much every time you reboot your phone. At least I did on every other beta and there it is. So we still get this for some reason that says automations will run once your iPhone is unlocked, but it says that after you've already unlocked your iPhone. So I assume that is a bug. It has still not been fixed here in beta four. Now, as far as the performance goes, my first impressions are that it feels the same as it has since beta one. I mean, there's really been no change in performance at all in 15.5 compared to 15.4.1. So just keep that in mind. I am running a Geekbench test just to see those scores because it's fun to look at and compare them, but you're not gonna really see a big difference in performance. So we got a 1741 on the single core and a 4802 on the multi-core. So if we compare that to beta three, where's beta three? I think this was it right here. So a 1738 and a 4878. So higher on the single core, but lower on the multi-core. But again, these scores don't really tell a lot. I mean, it's really just vanity numbers at this point. It's cool to look at, but it doesn't really you know, tell you how the real life performance is. Now, as far as battery life goes, you guys know I said battery life was not that great in beta one or beta two. It really got pretty good with beta three. And now with beta four, I would expect the same. So I think battery life is right on par with 15.4.1. And that's a good thing. I mean, that fixed the battery drain for a lot of people. I know some people still have issues with it, but for most people, it fixed the battery drain and you should expect that here with 15.5 as well. Apple didn't really tweak much with the battery life. It was just bad in the earlier betas. So now let's move on to what is next from Apple. So next week is going to be the release of the fifth beta, most likely. So we can probably expect to see 15.5 beta five on Tuesday, May 10th. Apple has been loving those Tuesday releases. So we can expect it then. And I expect that to have an A at the end of the build number, which indicates we should have an RC the following week, maybe even later that week. So it depends on when the RC comes out, but if the RC comes out on the week of May 9th after the fifth beta, maybe on a Thursday or Friday, we can expect 15.5 final on the week of the 16th. But if it comes out a week later and we get the RC on the week of the 16th, then we'll probably see the final of 15.5 on the week of the 23rd, which is my original prediction a few weeks ago. Now, yes, I do still think there's a possibility of a 15.4.2. However, I think that needs to be released really within the next week if it's going to come at all, because we're going to be getting too close to 15.5 for a 15.4.2 to make sense. So Apple would have to release that like next week at the very latest, if it's coming at all. And then of course, down here on June 6th is when we'll see iOS 16 beta one. So just over a month from the day of recording this video, we're going to see the next major version of iOS and iPad OS. And of course, all the other software as well. But anyways, there you have it. That is iOS 15.5 beta four. Again, pretty boring update, just a lot of changes in the code. And of course, a few minor changes on the front end. But still, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 15 and especially iOS 16 coverage coming soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.